Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Identity 15. So in this episode, we will be discussing on private key JWT authentication in WSO2 Identity Server. So first, I will introduce myself. I am Gayatri Mahindra Kumaran, working as a software engineer at WSO2 Identity Access Management Team. So first, we will discuss on client authentication. So here, the clients can be considered as confidential client or public client as per the O2 specifications. So when a client application tries to invoke a token request to the token endpoint, it will receive a token in response. So here, if the client is a confidential client, the client must require a client authentication. So why we need this client authentication? The client authentication ensures that the token is issued to the original, the legitimate client and not shared with any potential malicious parties. So in order to do the client authentication, the client should possess a secret. So it, the secret can be a shared secret or a private key. So if we think of a shared secret, so when a client application tries to register to the authorization server, it will receive a secret and a client ID in response from the authorization server. So this secret or the password will be stored in both the client side as well as the server side. But when we consider the private key, the private key is generated from the client side. So the client will generate a private RSA key and it will generate a public key and store it with itself. And the uh, client will share the public key with the authorization server and the client uses this private key to sign the accession JWT token. This will be shared with the authorization server when invoking the token request. So since we have two types of secrets, there can be more uh, authentication methods that the client can use. So when we consider the shared secret based, there are a couple of authentication mechanisms. One of them is client secret basic. So in this mechanism, the client will use the client ID and client secret and encode it using the base64 encoding and add it to the authorization header. Then the authorization server can validate the client ID and client secret. But when we consider the client secret post, here the client ID and client secrets are packed in the request body. The client secret JWT is something different. So initially the client will prepare the data. So the data will be uh, the data will contain the required claims and some optional values. It will be uh, built a JSON object as per the OpenID con uh, configurations. So once the client application get the data ready, it will use the client secret to sign a signature. So once this is done, the client will include the data and the signature in the token request to the authorization server. But when we consider the uh, private key based mechanisms, we will be having the private key JWT TLS client all. So today we are going to look into the private key JWT more deeply. So in the next slides, we can see its process and steps. So when we see the private key JWT, it's something similar to the client key, uh, client JWT mechanisms. So here the client application will uh, generate the private key and the public key initially and it will share the public key with the authorization server first. So now the public key is accessible to the server. As I said before, the client application will prepare the data with the required claims and other optional claims, and it will use the private key in order to sign the signature. So once this is done, it will include the data and the signature in the token request and send it to the authorization server. So once the authorization server receives the data and the signature, since it has the public key, it will uh, use the public key to validate the data and the signature. So once the verification is success, it will the authorization will server will send the token as a response to the client application. So this is what, what I said earlier. So here the client application uses an asymmetric key, the private key and the public key. So it will be generated from the client side and it will share the public key to the authorization server and the client will prepare the data in the JSON format 
as per the OpenID specifications. So once it generates a signature, it will send a token request and the authorization server will respond to the token back. So these are the things that need to be discussed. So from here onwards, we will go into the demonstration. So in order to uh, do this demonstration, we need some prerequisites before. So we need an identity server. So I'm, uh, I'm using an IS 6, 6.0 version of identity server. And we need this private key JWT authentication connector. You can get it from our WSO2 store. And once you download both of them, you need to add the connector inside the drop-ins folder of the identity server. And in the uh, deployment toml file in the following uh, location, you need to add these configurations in the toml file in order to try out these private key JWT authentication connectors. Uh, so I have written a medium article on how to do this private key JWT authentication with WSO2 identity server. So in, before starting, you need to have the identity server and the authenticator connector. So for that, uh, in order to download the identity server, you can navigate to the identity WSO2 uh, official website and from there, products navigate to the identity server. And from there, you can download the identity version. So in this demo, I am using the WSO2IS 6.0.0 version and you need to download this private key JWT authenticator. For that, you can simply navigate to the, um, go to the WSO2 store and download. Please note the compatible version when you are using it. So uh, once you download both of them, you need to add the uh, connector to the drop-ins folder and you need to add these configurations in the terminal file. In my case, I have uh, completed the uh, setup part, so I will move to the uh, second step. So here we need to create a service provider. And once we create the service provider, we need to do the inbound authentication configurations under that OpenID Connect configurations. We need to provide the callback URL. In this case, I am using a OADC debugger sample application since we don't need to do much with the application since we are trying only the token endpoint. So I'm using this as a callback URL. So for that, uh, you can log into the management console using the credentials admin admin and from there try to create a new service provider. Uh, give a proper name, any uh, names that you wish and once you give the name, you can register the application. Then you need to go to this inbound authentication configuration. From there, Auth or OpenID Connect configurations and click Configure. So here, you just need to uh, give the callback URL. So once you give the callback URL, uh, add the changes. So now our application has been registered successfully. So from there, uh, you will get a client ID and client secret. After this, uh, after this update your application. Mm, so once we have done completed this step, uh, then we need to generate a private key and public key from the client side. So since we are having a demo, we need to generate this public and private key from our side. So for that, you can simply follow these uh, commands to generate it. Uh, so I will generate it now. So what we need to do is uh, we need to provide these uh, commands to generate. First, we will uh, create a client key store initially. Uh, so here I'm, uh, we need to provide the client ID. So you can replace it with uh, your client ID of the application. So you need to provide a password. Uh, so once you provide the password, you can give a name. Uh, give, uh, give something that's uh, prompted. Uh, so you need to provide the organization name, then name of the city. Uh, so these are the things that you need to provide. You can provide uh, with your details and once you have done, you need to provide yes for this. Uh, so now we have successfully created our use a uh, key store. So you can check in the location. So now we have successfully created the key store. 
So after this, we need to um, export the public certificate from the uh, key store. So for that, uh, we need to run this particular command. So uh, in the command, replace the client ID whenever, uh, wherever it request uh, with the client ID of your application. Uh, so give the password that you have already provided. Now the certificate is generated with this client ID. So now we need to extract the public key and the uh, private key in the .pem format. But for that, first need to convert this uh, JKS key store to the PKCS12 format. For that, uh, we have two commands in order to run. So we uh, let's execute them one by one. So you need to provide a password for the destination. Um, it can be similar or you can uh, give an, uh, another new password and you need to provide the source password that you have already given. So now uh, the file has been properly uh, changed to the other formats. You can check uh, as well. So now we have done this. Uh, so now we can directly extract the public key and the private key from this .p12 uh, file format. Uh, so first I will extract the public key from it. Uh, then I can directly extract the private key as well. So now we have successfully extracted the public key and the private key. So once you have done, you will get the public key and the private key. Uh, so we have completed the step three. So now what we need to do is we need to make this public key accessible to the identity server. Uh, for that, you can go to the uh, go to your service provider that you have already created. Uh, so this is our application from there we can provide the certificate uh, we can provide the certificate in two ways once we can provide the jwks endpoint but here i'm going to upload the certificate so here you need to up uh, upload the public certificate so open your public certificate and copy only the content from begin certificate to end certificate you don't need the other steps so you can directly uh, paste your certificate and update the application so now we have made our um, uh, public certificate accessible to the identity server. So now we have completed this step as well. Now we need to prepare our JSON object. So since we are using this, we can use the same JWT header and uh, our JWT payload should, uh, should be based on these uh, configurations. Uh, the ISS and sub value can be the client ID and so the, there are some, these are the required parameters and there are some optional parameters as well. So once we prepare our payload, we need to generate the JWT uh, by signing with our private key. Uh, for that, what we can do is simply we can use this uh, JWT IO website in order to generate. So uh, since we are using the RS-256, we need to select the RS-256 first. Uh, then we need to uh, update the payload. Uh, so in the payload, you need to add the expiration time and the issue, issue, issuing times. So for that, uh, you can use this link uh, to get the time, um, time for your payload. So I'm using the current time as the issuing time and uh, I will add the expiration time uh, to something. Uh, sometimes later so I can copy this one. Uh, so and you can uh, the JTI should be a, a new value that you didn't use it previously so you can give some uh, random numbers 
So now uh, we have uh, added the payload. So here in the subject, we need to provide our client ID. Uh, so you can copy the client ID from your service provider and you need to update the client ID for the sub value and and this one so once you have uploaded you have config uh, you have configured your header and the payload now we need to uh, add our um, private key and the public key certificates so uh, you can as i said before you need to copy the contents from these two uh, begin and end certificate uh, tags so once you have done uh, i will add, add the public uh, certificate here we need to add the private key as well So once you have added, uh, you have you have generated your uh, JWT accession. So you need to copy these uh, contents. So once we have done this, uh, we have completed uh, almost all the steps. So now we have generated the client accession. Now we can try out the token endpoint in order to check out whether we check whether we get the access token. So for that, you can use this curl command. Uh, so you can use this curl command. So I have already added the curl command here. So here I need to update the client accessions. So you can update your client accession that you have generated. And once you send the token request, Uh, so this value JWTI should be a, a new value that you haven't used it in the last uh, time. So uh, let me update it to some other values. So once you have given a new value, you will get an access token. So you can try out this with the same JTA value as well. So this is what uh, we expected. So this is what we need in the response. So that's much for the demo. So uh, if you have any questions, you can contact, uh, contact us or, or you can raise questions in our community channel Stack Overflow as well. So our product team are willing to help you all. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please stay tuned for the next episodes.